morning. How's everybody doing? Fantastic. Um, I was originally going to talk about the future in medicine, and after being here for a day and a half and listening to people outside, I decided to uh, take a little bit of what I was going to talk about and try to combine three specific topics that everybody's uh, mentioning. And by the way, it's, it's amazing the, the, the breadth of speakers that we have here. I'm learning uh, so much uh, from each speaker, and everybody's touching a little bit on social media, a little bit about medicine, stress, and, and life, and that's what I want to share with you today. And really what I want to talk about is the number one killer for disease today is stress. If I told you cancer, if I told you HPV, if I told you Alzheimer's, if I told you cardiovascular disease, whatever, actually the number one killer is stress, because stress impacts all these uh, specific health quagmires. And as you see, stress is simply a reaction to a stimulus that disturbs our physical or mental equilibrium. I have about 900 seconds to get something across to you that I hope will change your lives that you can share with other people. Now, as I just mentioned, stress has become the number one uh, killer in the United States, influencing about 85% of all diseases. The number one disease, does anybody know what is the number one health issue in the United States today? Diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is the number one issue. But what I want to share with you in my, in my last book called Freedom from Disease, uh, what we try to educate medical doctors as well as the community is that diabetes also leads to clinical depression, Alzheimer's, and cancer. Stress leads to all aspects of this aspect. Now, 95 million Americans today suffer from some form of stress-related symptoms, whether it's family, whether it's work, divorce, whatever. There's one specific demographic that I want to talk about today, and that is adolescence from ages, say, 11 to 15, 16, and to subset that demographic, uh, 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 females. 36,000 Americans committed suicide last year. 36,000 Americans, not worldwide, just in our country alone. That is the first time in history that it has surpassed uh, uh, car fatalities. Now, with all the interconnectedness with Facebook, Twitter, and the like, why is this happening? Let me just go back one second. Suicide has become the third cause of death amongst adolescents. Listen to this. 14% of the teenage population contemplates suicide. It, it's wild. There's evidence now that in the inner cities of the United States, children as young as 12 contemplate suicide. I didn't even know what the word meant until I was in college. I didn't know that there was such a thing. Okay, with all the interconnectivity, why such depression? This is really what I want to focus on uh, today and talk a little bit about how it interconnects with diet and everything else. 30% of students in the United States are victims of bullying. I don't know how many of you have experienced bullying. I'm going to raise my hand. Has anybody ever experienced bullying when they were growing up? It is wild what exists today. 160,000 students stay at home each day due to bullying. I couldn't believe that statistic. 10 to 14-year-old girls experience the highest demographic of that uh, experience. Bullying victims consider suicide two to nine times more so. And 17% of adolescents experience cyberbullying in the last 30 days. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to share with you is that this helps lead to clinical depression and helps lead to even cancer, because bullying and stress turns on certain kinases which actually can speed up the process of cancer. Even in adults, the reason why so many women today are experiencing aggressive breast cancer between the ages of, say, 35 to 45 or even 48 is, is not that the, the, the breast cancer is abnormal, it's the aggressi aggressiveness of that cancer. And it's mainly due to stress, whether at the house, divorce, financial. So we have to figure out a way to control the stress. Stress and insulin. By the year 2020, the World Health Organization believes that stress-related diseases will be the second leading cause of death in the entire world. Who would imagine, with everything that we have, <laughs> TV, uh, IMAX, uh, uh, Tesla cars, I'm trying to think of everything in my mind. <laughs> it's amazing the way that we're living today, comparable to our grandparents. I remember being with my grandparents, who are long gone, they were born in the eight, uh, late 1800s, they did not experience the stress that we have today. In fact, I remember asking my, my wife's uh, grandmother, who was 93, what was the number one invention that affected her life? And she said, uh, the washing machine. 
She said because she used to, when she, she had several kids, and her hands used to bleed cleaning diapers. So the washing machine changed her life, and she was happy. And with everything that we have today, teenagers were not that happy. I want to leave time for questions and answers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is America today. Um, uh, I went down to Disney uh, for five days with my kids. Um, this, this plague of obesity leading to diabetes is something that I want to share with you. It's not just an epidemic due to the ease of food. It's, it's because for two million years of evolution, two million years of biological evolution, 400,000 years even that much tighter, and about 30,000 years of modern man, diet has changed drastically. The fact of the matter is we've been programmed, especially women, to gorge food. For, for millions of years and hundreds of thousands of years, uh, women were the last to eat. Men ate first. They were the hunters. They brought back food. Women, was, women were definitely smarter than men, so they gave the food to their children to eat first to give them nourishment, and they were the last to eat, and they started to gorge food. Why? They had to gorge it in order to uh, prevent other people from taking it, uh, other animals from taking it, and moving on. So we have to rewire our brains and deal with stress in a way that food does not become uh, uh, the savior, which leads to obesity, which leads to diabetes, which then leads to a whole other quagmire. Okay, look at this. A single 12-ounce can of soda provides the equivalent of 10 teaspoons of table sugar. An extra can of soda a day, just one, one soda, adds 15 pounds in a single year. So I'm trying to make the correlation that stress and diet affects our entire health care. It affects breast cancer, it affects clinical depression, it affects Alzheimer's. Longevity and diet. Um, calorie restriction is shown is really the only way <laughs> that if we decrease the amount of caloric intake, perhaps we live uh, a little bit longer. Uh, most of it is genetic, but the fact of the matter is there's nothing better you can do than exercise. 1,200 seconds a day Watch 1,200 seconds, 20 minutes. 1,200 seconds a day is all you need to do to lower your insulin levels, which then lowers your cortisol levels. And why do you want your cortisol lower? Cortisol turns on your insulin receptors. And if you have early stage cancer or your immune system is suppressed, cortisol, one of the uh, roles of it is to turn on the insulin receptor, which then helps divide cells. If you remember from basic biology, mitosis, mitosis is uh, the replication of cells. You do not want your cells to replicate fast if you're in early stage uh, cancer. So exercise is perhaps the number one way, even more important than diet, uh, to deal with controlling your insulin levels. So 20 minutes, which is 1,200 seconds a day, that is all you need to do. 30 minutes is even better. And by the way, sex is great. There's, there's evidence in the literature uh, 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 that sex, and I don't, you know, it's not gonna last 20 minutes for sure, at least in my case. But the fact of the matter is, <laughs> hey, after four kids, you don't have to brag. Um, uh, the fact of the matter is, if you incorporate these aspects of, of, of your life, exercise and diet, your life will change drastically. Look at this data. I want to show you the U.S. Pima Indians who live in the United States versus their cousins who live in Mexico. Just look at the difference. Here's, here's the latest. Just look at the difference in diabetes, all based on physical activity and diet. The Mexican Pima Indians have a totally different diet of fiber, of beans, and tremendous exercise comparable to their American counterparts. The evidence is overwhelming the importance of exercise to change one's life system. Look at these. One pound of corn is only 390 calories. Processed food, that's what I'm trying to share here. 1,700 calories if you make it into cornflakes. Look at one pound of potatoes to one pound of potato chips. It's all about education. I'm going to try to speed up so that way we have time. I personally believe, again, that stress is the leading cause of disease. And this just shows you some quick data of a Swedish study of twins on how aging was affected just by stress alone, just by meditating what that can do for you. And we had a couple of speakers yesterday talking about the importance of meditating. I do Tai Chi every single day religiously. It takes six to seven minutes breathing. It's amazing what it does. This just shows you uh, stress affecting uh, cancer. I'll skip that because I want to leave it open for questions and answers. Now, everyone in this room should normally live 120 years. Humans are programmed to live to 120 years with no scientific uh, breakthrough. 
Uh, just like uh, McCoys, those beautiful birds in South America live to 85 years of age, you have uh, the, the, uh, the nurse, nurse sharks can live a long time. Uh, whale sharks can live 200 years. Uh, elephants live 55 years. We should live to 120, but Dr. Weinberg believes that there's no reason why we shouldn't live to 200 years. The key thing is getting our body fit, our mind fit, and it's not too difficult. How many seconds a day? How many seconds a day do we have to do? 1,200 seconds a day. Um, I think I have one or two more slides and then I'm gonna open up for Q&A for three minutes. Just to show that life can begin at, begin at 100. This is the last question I wanna ask because I wanna get something productive out of this. Everybody here is quite bright and everybody here is very connected. The question is what can we do collectively in social media, as social media experts to make change in bullying today that will also put an end to high insulin levels. Remember, I showed that correlation, stress leads to higher insulin levels, depression, and cancer in the next generation of adults. And that's what we gotta collectively uh, figure out. And the last slide, and I'll leave it for two minutes of Q&A, is to have an amazing day. And remember this, that knowledge that is not shared is simply knowledge, but when you share it, it becomes wisdom. So I wanted to leave it for two minutes for any questions or any comments or anything like that. So I'll stop here. And there's got to be at least one comment or one question, which is an erudite group. Yes, ma'am. I posted a book online yesterday, and I want to know what your is. My educational background is? My, educational, my doctorate is in education. I have an MBA. I have a bachelor's. But for 25 years, I've been in the business of financing and developing drugs for cancer. So I started about a dozen biopharmaceutical companies, mainly in women's cancers. Do you have any degrees in science? I'm sorry? Uh, 25 years of developing drugs for cancer, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know where, where um, uh, Isaac Newton got his PhD in physics? Do, do you know where he got his master's degree in physics? Thank you. Next question. Yeah, I, I take every day 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C. We have another speaker who's going to be talking about vegetables in, in, in the morning. Probably the single best vitamin you could take and always work with your medical doctor is 2,000 milligrams of vitamin D3. There's probably no better anti-inflammatory uh, as, as, as a vitamin. Um, uh, today, just while I have a minute left, uh, if you mention vitamin C, another great purpose of vitamin C actually is for fertility. Uh, uh, along with zinc. Zinc is probably the single greatest mineral you could take to increase uh, your sperm count in combination with vitamin C. And sperm count has decreased from 1945 today by 50% due to stress, uh, due to uh, 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 ch changes in temp temp temperature. Two degrees uh, difference in, 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 in your testes can decrease your sperm count by 50%. Hot showers. That's what came in the 20th uh, century. I think I see your hand there. Great, great question. Okay, the question was, how can we educate the medical doctors about alternative medicine? I work in Western medicine all my life. I had spinal surgery 15 years ago. Uh, morphine did not help my pain. I mean, a morphine drip. Uh, Vicodin did not help the pain that I was in. And I never experienced pain like that in my life. I never had a headache. And if it wasn't for acupuncture, uh, my life would, wouldn't have, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> So I became a huge believer, and it's a matter of me educating the medical doctors that I work with, and I now routinely send people with cancer to the acupuncturist that I went to, and she's been tremendous in saving uh, amazing lives. So it's a matter of you educating with the knowledge, which the thing there, you have to share that knowledge, and medical doctors today are very, very open. How to reach me? Uh, uh, the best way to re reach me is, I'll give you my, my, my direct email. It, it's Peter at cash, K-A-S-H, F-A-M, that's family, dot com. That's my personal email. And uh, one last question and then I'm done. Okay, well done, I wanna thank you, yes? Uh, if you, instead of doing it in a, in a primary area, just uh, speak to me on a confidential basis and I'd be more than happy to share, but she's amazing, she is, she saved my life along with a lot of other pe people. Her name is Sue Negrin, Sue Negrin on 78th Street. Okay, thank you very much.